Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on the channel. I hope you're all doing well, and if you don't know who I am, my name is Zach Watson, and I'm an adventure photographer. Today, we're gonna be deep diving into Lightroom Mobile and going through the entire platform. We're gonna be taking you from not knowing the platform whatsoever to being a quite experienced photo editor. So without further ado, let's jump into Lightroom Mobile and get this video started. Okay, so here we are inside of Lightroom Mobile. And when you first open the app, it's gonna look a little something like this. Now I've already imported one of my photos in here. As you can see, if I open that up, we've got a little photo on the screen. And this is the photo we're gonna be editing today. If you don't know how to do this, all you need to do is come down to the bottom right corner and press the little photo with the plus next to it. Or if you wanna take a photo from your phone, you can just hit the camera button and you can actually take photos inside the Lightroom app. So once, you've got your photo, so once you've got your photo imported to Lightroom, open it up and then you'll see you've got a wide range of things we can do. So down the bottom is all of your settings. You've got absolutely everything we're gonna be changing on the photo down here. We're not gonna be diving into the masking or the healing side of things at the moment, purely because that is a paid part of the app and I just wanna be covering the free things for a majority of the users. So let's start with the auto setting. If you just tap auto, what this is gonna do is Lightroom will take your photo and edit it for you. It'll just use different algorithms to analyze your photo and work out, I guess, what it thinks is the best edit for your shot. Now this isn't gonna tweak absolutely everything that you can edit. Like if we dive into the color grading side of things, this none of this is gonna be changed at all. But nonetheless, it's going to edit all the light stuff. As you can see, this is all now changed. Oh, not the highlights. This is all changed. Um, usually this is just all zero, 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 zero. So just tapping auto is gonna give you a fairly good base start. Now, of course, this isn't the idea. You don't just wanna tap auto on every photo and then say, yep, I know how to use Lightroom because that is not the idea. But this can get you to a pretty good spot if you don't know where to take your image, especially from a raw shot, because if you're shooting in harsh lighting conditions like this, it can be pretty easy to mesh your shot up and not get it to where you want it to be. But with that being said, we're just gonna undo this auto setting. And what that is gonna do is it'll just take us back to where we were before. And you can do that by just tapping that little arrow in the top of the screen, super handy. So now we're into the light tab. Now this is crucial for every photo you're gonna edit. This basically controls how bright or how dark your image is, and it will also control the contrast of your image. Now, before we dive into this, I'm gonna turn a little setting on that I like to have on, on all my shots. And it's a super helpful tool when you're editing photos, and that is the histogram. So what you wanna do is come up to the top right hand corner and press those three little dots and then hit view options and then just tap histogram. Now what's come up is this weird graph at the top here and this basically tells you exactly what is in your shot. As you can see, we've got a big spike on the left hand side and we have a little medium kind of spike on the right hand side. The left hand side is gonna show you all the dark parts of your image and the right hand side of this histogram is gonna show you all the bright parts of your image. Now, if we take the exposure dial here, which just controls how bright or how dark your image is, it doesn't take anything into consideration. It either just makes everything bright or everything dark. So if we move this exposure slider to the right, you'll see that this whole histogram all of a sudden just shoots up over to the right. And as you can see, we get a huge spike on the right hand side. So as soon as that spikes up over to the right side, we're getting clipping, which means there's no information in the highlights of this image. And the same thing happens when we push the exposure to the left, we get clipping on the dark side of things, which means there is no information in the shadows or the, the blacks of the image at all. And everything gets pushed back to just completely dark. Now, this isn't the idea at all. You don't wanna be doing those kind of adjustments, but you can use the histogram to kind of give you a good idea of when you have pushed something too far or how you can get a nice even match in your image. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna increase the exposure just a little bit. And as you can see, that kind of evens things out and brings the shadows of the whole image up. Now contrast, moving on to contrast. If we drop the contrast, you'll see everything kind of comes in from the edges and squeezes up. And it gives us a very flat look on our photo. It's not very rich at all. It's not very punchy or vibrant. And that's because it's just taking the most extreme values and pushing them closer together and making it not as punchy or in this case as contrasty. And you'll see the opposite happen when we we push the contrast all the way to the right. Those two spikes at the end just go crazy and shoot up and then we get some clipping. So depending on what kind of look you're going for, you really don't wanna push this slider a huge way either direction. I usually like to add a little bit of contrast into my shots, especially if you are shooting raw, you're gonna be coming out with a pretty flat image anyway. And don't worry, we can control contrast in a load of different ways later on in this tutorial. So moving on to the highlights, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna control the highlights. If we drop the highlights here, you can see a whole bunch of the sky comes back. And if we push the highlights to the right, a lot of the sky gets blown out and disappears. Now, what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to leave the highlights up just a little bit. I don't want there to be much detail or any detail at all in the sky. 
I think a shot like this really suits it. A lot of them don't. A lot of the times you do want detail in both the shadows and the highlights, but for something like this to show light rays bursting through a palm tree, it definitely suits. Moving on to the shadows, this is the opposite of the highlights and it is gonna control the darker parts of the image. Now, from the get-go, you can see that this photo is very, very dark, especially in the foreground. So we are gonna boost these shadows up nicely, just like that. And then the whites and the blacks are gonna control the white point and the black point of the image. And what that is gonna do, if you have a look at the histogram up here, is if I push this white point, you're gonna see the whites just boost up and clip. And then if I drag them back down, you're gonna see the highlights get a nice faded look to it and the whites of the histogram get pushed way back down. Now what this is doing is just giving you an area to control the white clipping and the black clipping. This is another way you can add a slight amount of contrast. And if you wanna add a little bit of contrast, just boost the whites a little bit and drop the blacks a little bit as well. And that is the light tab covered, except for the tone curve. Now the tone curve can be found at the top of the light tab. And if we tap into the curve, this looks pretty intimidating. There's no markers, there's no lines, there's nothing that screams, look, this is what you should or shouldn't do. Or if you just move a part of this tone curve, things go crazy and you don't really know what you're doing from the get-go. But let me explain it. So I'm only gonna show you the RGB side of things. You can dive into individual colors. I personally never use these as I like color grading a different way inside of Lightroom and I'll show you later on. So I just come over to this white dot here which is also known as the RGB channel for the, uh, for the tone curve. So nonetheless, what we have here is in the bottom left hand corner, we have the blacks. Moving up to this little dot here, you can just place dots all along the line like that. And if you wanna remove a dot, you just double tap. And you actually just double tap on any slider to reset the slider back to zero. So nonetheless, we have the shadows here at this dot, at that, uh, that X intersection there. And then right in the middle of the tone curve, we have the midtones, which is something you cannot control with the sliders in the light tab. And then up here we have the highlights and then at the top here we have the whites. Now a very simple way you can attack the tone curve is just adding a nice simple S curve. So what that means is just slightly dropping the shadows here and this will just add a nice amount of contrast. Boosting up the midtones just a slight amount, nothing too crazy. And then also boosting up the highlights there. And as you can see, we've got a nice little S curve. Now, something that I do to nearly all of my images is I raise the blacks. And what this is gonna do is add a nice fade to our images. I've spoken about this before, and I really think that it just adds a very nice subtle touch to your images and just kind of cleans them up. It doesn't make any part of the image clip or look really black where there's just no detail, and I'm a huge fan of it. Now, as you can see here, the image is already starting to develop fairly nicely. And if you wanna see a before and after of your shot, all you have to do is press and hold on the image and then release. So when you press and hold, you get before, you release, you get where you're at right now, which is the after. But nonetheless, that is the light tab completely covered. Now, of course, you can add different kind of tone curves and whatnot, honestly have fun with it, but just keep in mind that small little adjustments are going to completely just destroy your shot. So as you can see there, we just moved the highlights up and to the left, and now we've got something that, well, looks disgusting. So we're just gonna move this back down where the highlights are just slightly risen, and now we're gonna dive into the color. Okay, so here in the color tab, we have quite a lot going on. So first things first, you'll be met with the white balance, saturation, and vibrant sliders. Now what you can do here is if your image is slightly off, or maybe you shot it with the wrong white balance, which means it's either too cool or too warm. And I'll show you what that looks like. If it's too cool, it's gonna look super blue. If it's too warm, it's gonna look super orange and red and yellow. Not ideal either way. And like I said, you can just double tap on any of the sliders and it'll reset it back to where it used to be. So what you can do here is you can do a few things. You can either correct it manually, which is not the easiest thing to do in all honesty. You can also hit this drop down menu here and you can go into auto white balance. Lightroom will be able to analyze your shot and then try and correct the white balance from there. And then you can also select daylight, cloudy, shade, all these different kind of white balances. And these are just presets built into Lightroom. They're super handy, especially if you have made a mistake. But for this photo, at least in my opinion, the white balance looks on point. It might be a little bit blue, but I kind of like that vibe. So anyway, moving on to that, the tint also just works hand in hand with the white balance. If things are looking a little bit green, move them into the purples, and of course, the opposite applies. Then we have vibrance and saturation. Now these two are very different. Saturation just controls everything equally. So if we boost the saturation here, you can see every 
everything just gets boosted equally. And if we drop the saturation, everything gets dropped equally. With this being said, if I boost up vibrance, it's not going to boost up everything equally. If I drop vibrance, it's not gonna drop everything equally. So what this will do, it will try and map out the colors that are less represented in the photo and just affect them. Nine times out of 10 when I'm editing, I do leave this alone, at least the vibrance and the saturation sliders, because I much prefer correcting them inside the color mix tab. This is where the fun starts. So here you can see we've got all the colors up the top and we have hue, saturation, and luminance sliders. Now hue will change the value of the color. So for example, if we go into yellow here and I change the yellow hue over to green, we're gonna get a much more greenier tint on all the yellows. Now, of course, this image is very yellow heavy, so that is going to work very clearly. And of course, if I push it over to the orange, same thing's gonna happen. So I can reset it just by double tapping. And then if I come to the saturation, this is gonna change the intensity Density of that color. So of course, increasing the saturation is going to boost that and decreasing it is of course going to decrease it. And then luminance is going to control how bright the color is. So if I boost this, all the yellows get really bright. And of course, if I decrease it, they get super dark. This is an amazing tool and it's probably the easiest way to start developing your visual style. So we're just gonna quickly run through all the HSL sliders here, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. In my opinion, there's little to no red in this photo at all, but we are going to desaturate it just in case there's any rogue color going on there. And then we're gonna come into the oranges. I don't think there are too many oranges at all, but if there is, we're gonna push it just over to the yellow side a little bit. We're gonna desaturate it and we are gonna boost the luminance on it. And then into the yellows, I'm going to just move this over to the green side, just the touch. And then I'm gonna desaturate it quite a lot and then increase the luminance. And what that's gonna do, as you can see, it's giving us a very, very moody vibe. And I might've desaturated it just a little bit too much. We still want a little bit of oomph on that. If we go over to the orange side, it's just not the same. And then we're gonna move on to the greens. The greens are also gonna have quite a lot of an impact here. So we're gonna desaturate those as well. We're probably going to leave them where they are on the hue side of things. And then we are going to decrease the luminance just a little bit. I don't think there is much or, or any aqua at all, but we're gonna decrease the saturation. Same on the blues here. And we also might just tweak the hue a little bit just to give it that nice little teal vibe if there are any kind of rogue blues in the shadows. And something that I personally hate in a lot of photos. Now, of course, this all depends if you're working with skin tones or not, but nine times out of 10, I will desaturate purple and pink or purple and magenta for that fact. And that way it just kind of takes out any kind of chromatic aberration and especially in here. I noticed before that we had some weird purple fringing. Now there are other ways you can correct that, but if there's no purple in the shot and I don't want to bring out the purple in the shot, then there's no harm in just desaturating it um, because the only other part of the image that was going to be purple is the chromatic aberration part, which is not a nice thing to look at. So anyway, moving on back into the color tab, we now have grading. Now this was changed about six, seven months ago. And in my opinion, it got changed for the better. So what you can do here is you can push certain colors into the shadows, midtones, highlights, and the global overall color tone of the image. So as you can see here, if I grab this, we can make super big color changes to the image. So if I get this and we want to add a little bit of blue into the shadows, which is a super common color grading uh, technique, and I'll show you the complementary colors to go along with it. We actually might just make this whole entire photo blue or just a little bit more moody blue. Uh, but as you can see here, you can just dial in the, the hue you would like. And then once you've nailed that, you can just slide this little, this little circle back, just back and forward. Sometimes it breaks out of its lock. In my opinion, you never want to push too much of a certain color into one of these areas as it just gets a little bit messy. And then you can just continue scrolling over into the midtones and just continue like that. Now we might add a little bit of warmth into the midtones, not a great deal. We're just going to make that probably a little bit more orange as well. Nothing too crazy. And then into the highlights, we might add just a little bit of warmth. Once again, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy at all. We're still at saturation 20. There we go. And then into the global mix of things, where should we take this? Should we take this moody blue or should we go with a little bit more of a warmer vibe? I'm kind of rocking with that warmer vibe. We might just go with that. We're gonna dial this back quite a lot. It's a little bit finicky, this tool, but nonetheless, it works very well. And as you can see there, now purely just from what we've done so far, and it's been pretty quick in all honesty, we've gone from this 
to this. It's looking very nice. So that wraps up the entire color tab. And between light and color, these are the two most important tabs you're going to be using. But let's dive into effects. Now effects, you can change the texture, clarity, dehaze, and the vignette. You can also, I believe in here, you can add some grain into your image. So let's cover that. Texture is exactly that. It's just going to add little bits of contrast in textured areas. And in my opinion, I never play with this slider. If anything, I reduce a little bit of the texture just to give it a bit more of a dreamier vibe. Same thing with the clarity. It just adds a little bit of sharpness and contrast, especially on contrasted edges. So what I like to do is I like to reduce the clarity as it just makes it feel a little bit more dreamier and it's a little bit softer, which is always nice to see. Then with dehaze, this is a super interesting tool. It does exactly what it says. It dehazes your image. So as you can see, we've got a lot of haze, especially with these light rays coming through. And if we increase the dehaze, you can see the light rays pretty much just get eaten up. But if we decrease the dehaze, you can see the light rays get emphasized, but we also wash out the shadows. And if we increase the dehaze, the shadows and the uh, dark parts of the image become a lot more richer. So for this case, we are just going to simply drop the dehaze just a little bit to emphasize the light rays. Just a little bit more and then vignette this is something that i love and i use vignette on all of my images i think it adds so much to your photos and you can do this in the masking tab of things but like i said we're not going to be covering that in today's video but what i love doing is i love dropping the vignette this adds so much to an image and can save it what this does is it just adds a nice kind of outside ring and drops the exposure to help you focus in on the center of the image this works perfectly if you have a subject of a sort even this palm tree here it's really just going to help you narrow in and just help your viewer focus on what you want them to look at so i love dropping the vignette here and i usually go pretty heavy on this because i don't know i guess i've just developed it as my style over the years and as you can see now if we have a look a quick look at the before and the after i'm loving where this image is going so coming down, I'm not gonna mess with the midpoint, the roundness or the feather. That all just controls the vignette. I love how it's already set up. And then we can come down here to grain. This once again is very self-explanatory. And here you can just add grain. Now this is quite a nice little feature. If you go crazy balls to the walls with it, you can see that things just get very grainy and it's kind of like a cheap film preset. But if you just add a slight amount of grain, it just helps soften things out. And I'm a huge fan of this. If you're seeing any banding in your highlights, especially of color, or if you're seeing any banding in the weird shadows or highlights, whatever the case, if you just add a slight amount of grain, nine times out of 10, it will fix it. So that wraps up things for the effects tab and then diving into detail. This I never touch. I personally never sharpen my images as I think the photos that come out of my camera, especially my phone, are already far sharp enough. So I'm happy to just leave this as is. Noise reduction, if necessary, of course, I would just slightly increase this. So what this will do, it will just smooth out the noise in your shot but it will also smooth out a lot of texture in your shot, which isn't always ideal. So do be careful when you're playing around with this. And then you can also drop the color of the noise reduction. If you've ever seen really aggressive high ISO noise, you'll see that it starts to add like weird pink, blue, purple kind of colors into the noise, which is far from ideal. And here you can just simply either add or subtract the noise color. So if you are working with a photo in low light situation, I would definitely recommend playing around with the noise reduction. Next up, we're gonna combine the optics and the geometry tab because they are very similar. On one end, you have the ability to just simply turn turn on or turn off lens correction and chromatic aberration correction. And what this will do is Lightroom will use its pre-built in presets behind the scenes. It's not something you can particularly control and it will just add it to your image. So for example, if I'm shooting on my Canon R6 with my 16 mil F 2.8, it will control how much distortion is or isn't there and it will adjust it to make it look true to eye and at least true to how it should look. And with that being said, moving over to the geometry tab, you can kind of control this a little bit more. You can't control the chromatic aberration you can control the distortion. As you can see, we can make things look really strange and we can make things look even weirder. But if you're running with a camera and lens setup or even your phone that Lightroom can read the information from, if you just tick the box nine times out of 10, it will sort it out. Then with geometry, you can just change the rotation, the crop, if you wanna squeeze the photo or stretch out the photo. These are all different things you can do in here. Something that I like to do, especially a lot with mountain shots, is what I'll do is I'll just simply squeeze it to make things just look a little bit taller 
taller. You don't want to push this too far, especially if you have people in your shop because they start looking very weird. But we might just make this palm tree look a little bit taller than what it does in real life. And then I'm also going to just hit constrain crop, which means there's no white parts of the image from where we squeezed to make sure the image is still cropped and takes up the full amount of screen real estate. And that pretty much wraps up things here. The last thing I wanna cover is the crop tool. Now this is something that is in the free version. If you wanna be cropping for Instagram stories or TikTok, you wanna be using nine by 16 or 16 by nine. And then if you wanna be cropping for the Instagram feed, at least for now, you wanna be cropping four by five, and that'll get you to the ideal size of where you can take up the most screen real estate on Instagram. And this is pretty much it. This dives into nearly everything you need to know inside of Lightroom Mobile. From here, if you wanted to take this edit and convert it over to a different photo, you can do this a few ways. You can come up into the top right-hand corner where the dots are. You can hit copy settings and then copy everything and then go paste it onto a different photo. Or you can hit the dots again, hit create preset, tap exactly what you're after, and then you can go and use that preset for the future on all your other photos. Or you can save everything we've just covered in today's video and go check out my master collection of Lightroom presets, they will be linked in the description below. So now you've edited your image, you've cropped your image, everything's good to go, you've created your preset, now you just need to get it out of Lightroom and onto your phone. All you have to do for that is come up into the top right hand corner, press the little square with the little arrow coming out of it. This is the export button, hit export to camera roll and you are good to go. And within a nutshell, that is Lightroom Mobile wrapped up without going into too much detail within any one setting. This video could honestly be hours long, but there's no point of it. And this will set you off in the perfect direction to get you started. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've been able to learn a lot from this video. If you have, let me know what you learned down below. Leave a like if you have enjoyed today's video. If you're new around here, subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.